May 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 12 from the New Testament. About that time, King Herod laid hands on some from the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, executed with a sword. When he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter too. This took place during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison, handing him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him. Herod planned to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but those in the church were earnestly praying to God for him. On that very night before Herod was going to bring him out for trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the prison cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up, saying, Get up quickly! And the chains fell off Peter's wrist. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. Peter did so. Then the angel said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realize that what was happening through the angel was real but thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and second guards, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went outside and walked down one narrow street, when at once the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from everything the Jewish people were expecting to happen. When Peter realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many people had gathered together and were praying. When he knocked at the door of the outer gate, a slave girl named Rhoda answered. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed she did not open the gate, but ran back in and told them that Peter was standing at the gate. But they said to her, you've lost your mind. But she kept insisting that it was Peter, and they kept saying, it is his angel. Now Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were greatly astonished. He motioned to them with his hand to be quiet, and then related how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. He said, Tell James and the brothers these things, and then he left and went to another place. At daybreak there was great consternation among the soldiers over what had become of Peter. When Herod had searched for him and did not find him, he questioned the guards and commanded that they be led away to execution. Then Herod went down from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. Now Herod was having an angry quarrel with the people of Tyre and Sidon. So they joined together and presented themselves before him. And after convincing Blastus, the king's personal assistant, to help them, they asked for peace because their country's food supply was provided by the king's country. On a day determined in advance, Herod put on his royal robes, sat down on the judgment seat, and made a speech to them. But the crowd began to shout, The voice of a god and not of a man. Immediately an angel of the Lord struck Herod down because he did not give the glory to God, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God kept on increasing and multiplying, so Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem when they had completed their mission, bringing along with them John Mark. God, the other day I was reading uh, a book by one of your great authors, who you gifted very well, A.W. Tozer, and he says, The church that is not jealously protected by mighty intercession and sacrificial labors will, before long, become the the abode of every evil bird and the hiding place for unsuspected corruption. The creeping wilderness will soon take over that church that trusts in its own strength and forgets to watch and pray. And I think about this with, with this particular passage where all these people were praying for him. They were praying for Peter while he was in prison. And I think sometimes we don't take prayer as seriously as you want us to. That not only is it our amazing communication tool that we have directly to you, which is kind of crazy awesome, 
but it's also a way of, of protecting our world through your strength. When we don't pray, we are saying, we got this. Just like A.W. Tozer was saying, when they forget to pray, it trusts in its own strength. That church trusts in its own strength. And I, I think we trust in our own strength. I got this. I'm good to go. I got this relationship. I've got this test. I've got this problem at work. I, I, I've got it. And it's only when we get into really hot water that we remember that we have this communication opportunity with you. And, and you have always been really clear with us that you don't want to always come in at the at the most serious times of our life. You want us to have a good, healthy relationship with you. And I, I think about the relationships I have of this world and how they wouldn't work if all I did was anytime something bad happened as I ran to them in panic. <laughs> They would start to not take my calls or st stop texting me back uh, if that's the only part of the relationship I wanted to share with them. And I know we do that to you. And so God, today I just, I pray for our prayer life with you, uh, that it turns more into a relationship, a communication, an opportunity to grow in that relationship with you. Not only tapping into your strength in the big situations we get ourselves into, but also in the day in and day out um, situations. And more importantly, just to take a, a time in our prayer life to just thank you for all the amazing blessings that you've given us. Uh, prayer is, is to be a time of reflection, a time of thankfulness, a time of forgiveness. Uh, and instead we just use it as a 911 call. And for that, I am truly sorry. I don't want to rely on my own strength, God. I want to rely on yours. I want to have a consistent, healthy, full relationship with you in all the areas of my life and not just bring you in when panic has set in. Thank you for giving us this amazing opportunity to talk to you, directly to you. And the crazy part is we know when we hear from you and it's absolutely amazing that you would pay attention to someone like me and answer my prayers. I love you very much. In your son's name I pray, amen.